Welcome back to this week's Prepare Like a Pro live chat show. My name is Jack McLean. I am your host, and today I'll be discussing all things for the upcoming week, including our episodes for the podcast and our two Prepare Like a Pro live chat shows for this week. So let's get straight into it. We have Body Magic, Jared Magic, who's been on the Love Island show. He's got a huge Instagram following and online presence. He's uh, dominating from a personal training, but also a strength and conditioning point of view, where he's working with AFL players in their off season. And really looking forward to having Jared on, not only to um, share his knowledge, but also to discuss his journey in the uh, fitness industry and hopefully share some, no doubt, um, helpful tips and tricks for coaches that want to build an online presence like um, Body Magic where he's looks like he's got a great thing going on. So really looking forward to uh, having him on the podcast. If you want to listen to the uh, episode and also interact and send in questions for Jared, all you need to do is subscribe to our YouTube channel. That'll be at 12 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Tuesday. Our next live episode will be with Robert Augie. He is a professor and sports scientist at the Victorian University. He's been doing it for a number of years now. He's a real expert in this field, and I'm really looking forward to having someone on in the research academia side of things. We've had a lot of uh, practical tips and tricks from some of the best world-class strength and conditioning, high-performance, strength and power coaches working in the industry. So really looking forward to seeing the other side, the research side, and how we can um, stay in tune with the science, um, everything that all our methods are scientific based uh, and uh, all coaches obviously filter what's relevant for their sport and their athletes and individualize it accordingly to make it practical and efficient with the environment but it's really awesome to have Robert on to find out uh, what's going on in this space and how we can better our practices from a scientific research based point of view. So if you want to listen to that interview that will be at 8 30 p.m this Thursday Australian East Standard Time just like with Body Magic, you can send in your questions. It's a dynamic interview. I'll do my best to answer or f- find the time to fill, fit in everyone's questions. So you can do that by using the YouTube chat box. In terms of our podcast, we have Jacob Tober, who was on the live chat show a couple of weeks ago, where we shared his journey as a strength and conditioning coach, working up the ranks at Core Advantage, as well as his most recent new addition which is uh, getting into technology sports science tech Um, and you you can download the app via his website it's called metric it's in the better testing phase at the moment and it's in its final stages so really excited to discuss his journey as a coach but also the new work that he's doing through core advantage and his own um, personal company metric so Make sure to listen to that episode to learn some tips and tricks for the athletes wanting to improve your power and start using barbell velocity um, and using the method of VBT, velocity-based training, which Jacob is really knowledgeable in this area, and we discuss it in great detail, as well as for the coaches that want to learn off Jacob and and follow a similar path and have success in the private sector. You definitely want to tune into this episode and hear what they're doing at Court Advantage because they're definitely ahead of the game. So that will be released on Tuesday. Our Get Better plan for this week, which we release an educational form podcast every Wednesday, will be on how to pace your 2K time trial. I know a few footballers out there that may have not hit their Christmas targets and unfortunately have to do another fitness test, whether it be the repeat 1Kers or two-minute time trial, whatever their aerobic capacity test is. This podcast is specific to yourself as well as, of course, like always, the strength and conditioning coaches that like to nerd out on this this sort of stuff, the physiology and, and programming sort of things. So make sure to tune in. That will be on Wednesday. And then on Friday, we have another uh, bite size uh, Nutrition for Sports Performance podcast that will be released. This one's with Ben Parker. He's the chef and Gold Coast um, dietitian at you know, the Gold Coast Suns. And really looking forward to sharing his interview that we did on YouTube a few weeks ago. Uh, it's jam-packed with golden, um, little golden nuggets that you can take away to improve your body composition and how important it is to have an individualized approach. No one body size fits all when it comes to football. You've got to think about your genetics, your medical history, how you play the game, the position you play, 
uh, and Ben goes into a great detail about how important it is to understand um, what may work for you, may not work for others. So having that individualised approach, uh, as well as giving some practical tips and tricks that footballers can take away. Um, so make sure to tune in. That will be on Friday. And now we're going over to our Instagram live for our live questions. Bear with me for one sec as we stream live. We'll also be sharing our power tip for the week. Hey guys, it's Sean Baker from the Peak Performance Centre here. We're South Australia's premier high performance facility available to the public. Uh, currently I head up at SNC for men's and women's Australian lacrosse. Previously I worked in AFLW, AFL Development, The Sample and a bit of international cricket. I'm really excited to be presenting on Prepare Like a Pro this Thursday night. Pumped up to be talking to Jacko. Uh, I'm going to be talking about creating a systematic approach to programming for a private facility. So how do you create a system that can ensure you've got consistency throughout coaches while still providing them the opportunity to give them their own little bit of flair as well. So guys, get excited. I'll see you there Thursday and thank you for the opportunity to chat there, Jack. G'day Instagram and thank you for tuning in to Prepare Like a Pro live chat show where I update all things up and coming for the week ahead. We will get straight into the questions. So I had a couple sent through via story. So we'll send answer those first. First one is how to recover faster from a broken nose. Mm, that would be completely out of my depth of knowledge. Sorry, I will have to recommend you see a sports doctor for that one. Um, you've written in another question though, which I may be able to help you with. How to build on muscle and wait for an AFL player? Great question. Uh, because AFL football um, requires uh, heavy collisions as well as um, your ability to be able to create space using your physical strength, it is really, really important to have a good amount of weight um, to make it harder to, to push yourself out of the contest and be able to keep your feet, but also that you have functional weight as well so you're really strong and powerful uh, in the trunk through your hips so you can not only hold your ground in a contest but also you you have the ability to be able to move efficiently across the field you're not you know carrying a lot of weight through your arms and lower leg that's going to um, make it really costly in terms of the um, long distance running and, and repeat high intensity efforts so Typically for an AFL football, obviously it varies depending on your age and the position you play and a lot of individual factors like medical history and um, and definitely you want to recommend that you see a dietitian to help you with the lifestyle side of things. But from a strength and conditioning point of view, making sure you're following a tailored gym program that's suited to gaining muscle and suited to yourself. So like for instance at Prepare Like a Pro, we have a gainers program out of our online program where you follow the app uh, Team Builder. It has everything that you need to do throughout the day. And the guys that are on the gainers program typically do more weight training and higher volume of work to elicit a hypertrophy effect, which, you know, let's say you're trying to focus on uh, gaining power, you might do five repetitions where for the gainers that are trying to gain muscle mass, they might be doing 10 repetitions at a slow tempo. So three seconds on the way down, pause, and then maybe accelerate up, for instance. So not only are we um, challenging them through load, but also they're doing high volume to try and challenge the muscles to recruit more muscle mass, break them down, and then that's where the nutrition comes into it. So the training, we're stressing the muscles, breaking them down, and then depending on how well you sleep and how well that you fuel um, your muscles through protein and making sure you're getting enough calories and you're getting quality sleep, you know, getting sleep before midnight, at, sorry, before 10 p.m., will um, play a massive effect on how much muscle mass you, you will develop over that program. And the key as well is that we're progressively overloading. So each week you, we might change the uh, repetitions, you might change the tempo, or you might just simply just increase the weight from last week. So that's really, really important. So we're continually challenging the body to improve uh, and we're thinking of your goal in mind the whole time. So it's not just changing the exercises every week and you're just getting too much variation and not, and not being able to progressively overload that particular exercise. So hopefully that helps. And uh, sorry, I couldn't help your first question, but definitely want to handball that one over. Let's try and seek a 
professional uh, sports doctor, GP, um, how you can, uh, yeah, let your nose heal, mate. But hopefully the muscle and weight gain from Apple player helped. Next question was sent via email. It was from Kyle. I want to reduce two kilos of weight before uh, in the next month. Any tips? So the opposite of what I was talking about before, you know, seeking a dietitian and, and increasing your calorie intake by eating more and increasing your protein intake potentially um, and making sure we're doing more weight training. Um, conversely, with our guys that were trying to re- reduce body fat, we will have them on the reduce program. So for them, they're going to be doing extra work, but not so much in the gym. They're going to be doing more metabolic conditioning type sessions. So it's not going to affect their running on the field and their football training, which is really, really important this time of year, the most important thing from a lower body, low point of view. We'll use things like bike, um, which is not really that taxing on the nervous system. It's not really um, that taxing on the on the legs either because it's quite um, low load in terms of there's not a lot of eccentric load going through the body. It's all probably concentric contractions um, through the quads, hip flexors. So um, that's a great way to uh, challenge our physiology and spike our metabolism. So from there, you can do things like more off-feet conditioning drills like circuits where we're keeping our feet on the ground so you're not doing jumping work or running. Um, but you might be doing like an ergo or some med ball base work, boxing, these type of things. Swimming is another great option. So we're still challenging the body um, and improving the uh, metabolism by um, uh, increasing your output so you're burning more calories. And then the key part from a nutrition perspective, which same thing, seek a professional to help you with this, but you want to make sure that you're going hungry throughout the day. Uh, obviously not starving yourself, but if you're not going hungry, you're probably not in a calorie deficit and therefore you're not going to be dropping your, your goal of two kilos. You're probably just going to maintain weight even when you're doing the extra exercise. It's calorie in, calorie out. Um, obviously you want to maintain um, your performance and make sure you're fueling yourself. So thinking like limiting things like sugars, alcohol, your um, uh, calories through liquid and uh, any snacking or extra fuel that you potentially don't need, try and stick to the bang for buck, uh, real food, um, to make sure that your, your calories are going to give you plenty of nu- um, nutrients mic- and macro and micronutrients without um, having any excess uh, energy that you don't need. Uh, so to make sure in that calorie deficit, that's really, really important for those trying to drop weight. And if you're not going hungry throughout the day, then that's a pretty telling sign that you're not in that deficit, which we need. So in short, extra conditioning sessions, maybe one or two usually on our reducers program on like a Thursday or and, and then on the weekend, Saturday or Sunday, and that way we can help stimulate metabolism and then with the, the appropriate nutrition, you should see the results over the next few weeks. That's how I'll, um, I would tackle that one. Kyle, great question. Moving over, if for anyone listening in live, feel free to send in your questions. I'll do my best to answer them. Moving over to our power tip now. As I mentioned before, it's going to be on discussing key stresses as if they're um, how, how, how to be aware of key stresses, but also how to manage your mental and physical uh, health. So I just recently did a presentation on this with our Propeller for Pro Academy athletes, and um, it was a really good exercise to go through where we essentially did a, a visualization exercise where you imagine yourself in a boardroom and you've got your football stress sitting next to you, you've got your friends and family as another stressor sitting next to your potential stressor, you've got your athlete development goals, so your training goals, your strength and conditioning as another potential stressor, you've got your uh, work, uni or school, so uh, uh, things that we do between nine to five unless you're a professional athlete, so the things that you're doing throughout the day that can be a potential stress. So of these four key areas, and you may have a few others as well, like for those that have kids and, and so forth, there will be some different types of stresses thrown in there. But those four key ones for our developing footballers are ones that we want to stay in tune with. And it's really important through this boardroom exercise of visualising those people and, then, and their um, key parts of your self. You want to have conversations with those key parts. So just like you would with a close friend, you're checking in to see how they're going check in with those four key areas because if you're not um, doing that, reflecting on how you're going in those in, those, in that space, in those four different areas, then I guarantee the internal dialogue with those questions and 
um, frustrations of not tapping into those key areas that you value um, will be popping up throughout the day and that's where we can accumulate um, some stress and feeling potentially overwhelmed. So, for instance, an example might be your football stress. So we're getting to that point where practice matches are coming. You might be thinking, am I going to get selected? Am I going to make the final cut of the squad? Am I going to play the position that I want to play in? Um, so these are things that you're worrying about the future. They're not process-driven. They're more outcome-based, and they're not areas that you can particularly control. So we want to go back to focusing on with your football, what are things that you enjoy about the game? You know, and, and how can you focus on more of those sort of things, bring fun into the into the game of, of football because that's why you started. So it's playing with your mates and, and remembering that and, and tapping into that on a regular basis, not trying to get too caught up on, on the outcome and the, and the goals, um, which can easily happen. We all do it. So making sure we take a step back and focus on the processes that work well uh, for your routine. Just had a question sent through Vincey. What running distance should I train for if I want to be able to run without getting tired for an entire game of football? Uh, depending on the position you play, Vincey, this, this can – so for, let's say, your wingers, you might do lots of high-intensity efforts, so making sure you've got a repeat speed session, which would be typically pretty important for all positions on the field. That's where we're focusing on intensity. You might rest a little bit longer between efforts. Um, and over time, you'll do a high intensity effort, let's say a 150 meter effort, and trying to hit a 23 second rep, let's say. And early on in the off season, pre season, you're doing a 30 second rest, passive rest. As we get closer towards games, you might do like a jog return back to the start. So that's where we're improving um, your ability to recover while actively moving much more like a game. Um, and then you might have a 10-second passive rest before you go again to allow for that intensity. So that's one area or method that you could use. And so you're, you're influencing the work that you're doing um, in your rest periods. Uh, another way, you could just simply reduce the rest period in a, after a few weeks of being on the program. G'day, Andy. Good to see you. Tune in, mate. Um, but, yeah, Vinci, that would be my main advice. Think about your game. Think about the run patterns that you typically run and making sure that you're ticking off the big rocks, which for football is your volume-based running, so your longer distances. I typically don't program much longer than 1K, uh, so a lot of like 100-meter efforts, 150s, 200s, 300s, 400s, sometimes an 800, sometimes a 1K, particularly around 2K time trials and or repeat 1Ks, so that you've tapped into that type of running to get a good to get, make sure you hit your Christmas target. But as we're getting closer to games, we're doing a lot of shorter rep running, and what we... Um, change is what you're doing between the rest periods. So you might do a jog return, you might um, do a walking effort in your, in your recovery, uh, or you might go from changing your gears, you go from a jog pace to a run to a high-speed running pace and then go again. So you, you're practising more your high-intensity efforts. Um, and then the way that you want to try and improve your conditioning over time is by getting in big sessions over your week. So over the next couple of weeks leading into practice matches, have one session a week. Let's say if you train Monday, Wednesday, Fridays, Mon uh, Wednesdays, for example, where you're trying to get match volumes. So the way you can measure that is using GPS or a smartwatch if you haven't got access to GPS. Have a look at your last year's season average of how far you ran and try and do that at Wednesday training. Let's say you you did 7K um, as your average game last year in a season of total distance. And on this Wednesday, you've got 6K. And at the end of training, you will do an extra K of conditioning, 10 100s, for example, 20 seconds on, 20 seconds off. And that would be one way that you can help condition your legs. It's almost like a vaccine for COVID. It's a vaccine for conditioning your legs for football, like conditioning your legs to that volume and, and specific running distances that you would do. So in short, make sure you're, you're, doing, you're thinking about your game, uh, how far you're running in those distances, particularly in your position, replicating that pretty closely, and then think about what you're doing in between the rest periods and how close you are to your uh, game. And that's where we want to get as close to just training like football, the way you play as best we can in training, and then make sure once a week you're getting similar volumes as a game day over the next couple of weeks. So you're going to be conditioned for that first practice match. And then 
it would be remiss of me if I didn't mention that there is match conditioning as well. So making sure that you um, work hard in your practice matches like you will in round one, so you're getting that match conditioning in your practice matches. And that's going to be another important way. It doesn't matter how well your off-season, pre-season is, match intensity is always going to be higher because you're competing against other teammate, uh, other uh, opposition rather than teammates, so you're always going to go up a level. Um, so making sure that you bring that in your practice matches so you've got those runs on the board. Great question, though, Vinci. Hopefully I helped you answer that. Feel free to send through any direct messages. But um, going back to our power tip, we've got those three key areas that I talked about, uh, four key areas, sorry, so you've, you're those that are close to you, family and friends, tapping into that, so making sure that you're staying connected with your you know, five closest mates and you're catching up with them, your, your family, uh, so your loved ones, your football, um, not putting too much pressure on yourself and thinking too much about the future or worrying too much about the past but trying to be as present as you can and focus on your process that allows for performance, so your routine that works for you. And then we've got your strength and conditioning, your training, how, how's your body going with that in the gym? Are you in pain? Make sure that you, you flag that and speak to someone if you are in pain. Don't just ignore it because you're trying to improve your bench press or your, if it's on the field with you running your 2K toe trial, make sure that you uh, nip that in the butt really, really early if you are in pain um, so you not doesn't become a lingering issue. Uh, Max, I would recommend Jess Spenlove's Game Day ebook. You can download that, and we've got a coupon code as well. So if you direct message Jess Spenlove, she worked GWS for a number of years. She's got an ebook on specifically Game Day preparation for footballers. So definitely check out that out, Max. She's a sports dietitian, AFL experience. She'll be able to answer that question much better than I would. Uh, what should I eat before a game and when? And that is incredibly individualized as well. So there's lots of recipes and options and education. And those ebooks are highly recommended. I know a few of our athletes have downloaded Jess's ebook and got a lot out of it. So I'll hand all that one over to Jess. But if you head look at Jess Spenlove on Instagram and you can uh, get in contact with her there, Max. That's it for this week's guys. We have an exciting new uh, option where you can send in a video, uh, sorry, an audio message now via our website. So if you go to preparelikeapro.com and go to the podcast page, you can send us a voice message. And that way you'll make a appearance on the podcast and I can answer your question via that way. So it could be up to 90 seconds. You just take a recording from your phone, upload it through our website, and I'll answer that on next Sunday's live chat, which we do every week at 6 p.m. I want to thank Seba for writing an awesome uh, review on our iTunes. Seba wrote, I'm really enjoying the podcast. It is helping me become a better athlete and I'm learning to improve my game. This goes a long way, these reviews, guys, so I really want to, um, shout out to Seba and, and thank, thank him for the review. For anyone else that's out there that has a spare 10 seconds, we greatly appreciate the review. It helps us reach out with more people like yourself so we can help their game like Seba. So please rate and review our podcast and I'll see you guys on the next episode.